Okay, here we are. We're ready to put everything together and see if we can answer some questions without a calculator. And we want to try to get fast at this. I'm going to write things down in the notes, but as you're working through the homework, see if you can get to the point where you're not having to write things down and you're asking yourself questions in your head and answering them in your head without having to write a lot of information down. Now, we'll say this. You're probably going to have to copy down this table somewhere just to be able to see it uh, until you get it memorized by heart. And that's okay. You can definitely do that. It doesn't take real long as long as you remember those three things to remember uh, in order to construct this. And so I'm going to do that from memory now. Sine theta, I remember, is an increasing function. And so this is going to start with one half, then increase the square root of two over two, and then increase the square root of three over two. Cosine is the co-function of sine, and so it's gonna have the same numbers just in reverse order. And then finally, tangent theta is just sine theta divided by cosine theta, which means that I'm just going to take my one and divide by square root of three, which when I rationalize is gonna give me square root of three over three, and then square root of two divided by square root of two is going to give me one. And finally, square root of three divided by one is going to give me the square root of three. And so you're gonna to wanna to have this table handy for all of these problems as we practice here. So here's how I answer, what is sine of two pi over three without my calculator essentially in my head? The first thing I need to determine is what quadrant this angle is in. And so 2 thirds pi, I know, is going to be between pi over 2, which is half of a pi, and 1 full pi. This is going to be in quadrant 2, and I know my acronym says all students trust castle. And so sine is positive in quadrant 2. Two. And since 2 pi over 3 is in quadrant 2, and this is sine of a quadrant 2 angle, what that means is that the answer to this is going to be positive. Now, the next thing I need to know is what the reference angle of, of 2 pi over 3 is. Well, because it's a radian, that's going to be super easy. This is just going to become sine of pi over 3. And the last thing I'm gonna need to know is what the sine of pi over three is. Well, that's why I have this table right over here. And so the sine of pi over three is the square root of three over two. And so the answer to sine of two pi over three is positive square root of three over two. So once again, just one more time, I need to know the quadrant I need to know their, the, the sign of it, whether it's positive or negative, based on all-star trig class. And then I need to know the value from the table here that I constructed from memory. Okay, here in letter B, we've got tangent of five pi over four. And so I know that five pi divided by four is really just the same thing as one and one fourth of a pi. And so just thinking about that real quick, I know this is zero, I know this is one pi, and I know that this is one and a half pi, and so therefore one and a quarter pi is gonna be here in quadrant three. Now the reason that's important is because of knowing what the sine of this is going to be, and so in quadrant three, tangent is positive, and so this tangent of five pi over four is gonna to equal to positive tangent of the reference angle for five pi over four, which is just pi over four. And so what is the positive tangent of pi over four? Well, tangent theta is here, pi over four is here, and so tangent of pi over four is equal to one, and therefore tangent of five pi over four is also equal to one. Okay, here in example C, you'll notice that I didn't copy over the chart onto this problem, and the reason for that is that pi over two is not in a quadrant. It is what we called earlier a quadrantal angle, meaning it is on an axis. Pi over two, remember, is the top of the unit circle, and so whenever we are finding sine, cosine, or tangent,
of a quadrantal angle, we don't use that chart. We instead use these four points. One, zero, zero, one. Over here on the left would be negative one, zero. And down at the bottom would be zero, negative one. And we couple that with the fact that sine theta, remember, is equal to the y coordinate. Cosine theta is equal to the x coordinate and tangent theta is equal to the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. And so when I want to find sine of pi over 2, I just have to remember that pi over 2 is here at the top of the unit circle. And because we are being asked to find the sine of pi over 2 and sine theta is just equal to the y coordinate, that means the answer to sine of pi over 2 is just going to equal to 1. Now, just as additional practice here, um, if I were to ask you what cosine of pi over 2 is, then that would just be the x-coordinate of the point at pi over 2. And so what is the x-coordinate of that point? It is 0. And then finally, if I wanted to do tangent of pi over 2, then in that case, I would do the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. And so that would be 1 divided by 0, which of course cannot be done. And so the tangent of pi over 2 is actually undefined. And so please differentiate between the different methods. If the angle is in a quadrant, then we're going to follow the methodology of using that chart along with a reference angle. All students trust Castle and that whole shebang. But if the angle is on an axis, if it is a quadrantal angle, then that means we are going to use this method where we consider one of those four points and the fact that sine theta is y, cosine theta is x, and tangent theta is y over x. Okay, here in example D, we are asked to find the value of cosine of 7 pi over 6. And so the first thing you ought to notice is that 7 pi over 6 is in a quadrant. It is not one of my four quadrantal angles. And so therefore, we are going to need our chart here. And so let's bring that into play. The first thing we want to know is what quadrant 7 pi over 6 is located in. Well, I know that 7 pi over 6 is the same thing as 1 and 1 sixth of a pi. And so when I think about that, 1 pi is going to put me here, and then 1 sixth is going to put me into quadrant 3. And so using my acronym, all students trust Castle. In quadrant 3, tangent is positive, sine and cosine are both negative. And so for the first time, we're going to have an answer that is equal to negative cosine of the reference angle for 7 pi over 6. Well, because this is over 6, the reference angle is going to be pi over 6, and then cosine of pi over 6 is going to come from my chart. And so cosine of pi over 6 is going to be root 3 over 2, and so I'm just going to combine that with the negative sign and get the answer here to be negative square root of 3 over 2. Okay, here in example E, we have tangent of 5 pi over 6. And so the first thing I recognize is that that is not a quadrantal angle. It is in a quadrant. And so therefore, once again, I am going to need this chart of values. What quadrant is 5 pi over 6 located in? Well, if this is 0 and this is pi, that means that this is pi over 2. And notice that 5 6 is smaller than one, but it's bigger than a half. And so therefore that's going to put this angle into quadrant two. And I know that in quadrant two, tangent is negative. And so this is going to be equal to negative tangent of the reference angle for five pi over six, which is going to be pi over six and tangent of pi over 6 using my chart is going to be tangent pi over 6 square root of 3 over 3. And so this is going to equal to negative square root of 3 divided by 3. Okay, apparently I don't know the alphabet, so here in the second example E, 
uh, we're going to find the value of sine of 7 pi over 4. And so again, notice that is not one of my four quadrantal angles, and so I am going to need this chart of values here. And so what quadrant is sine of 7 pi over 4 in? Well, 7 pi divided by 4 is really the same thing as 1 and 3 fourths of a pi. And so this is 0, this is going to be 1 pi, this is going to be 1 and a half pi, but 3 fourths of a pi is bigger than 1 and a half, and so therefore we're going to be in quadrant 4. Now, what does my acronym say about quadrant 4? It says that cosine is positive, but sine and tangent are negative. And so therefore, this is going to equal to negative sine of the reference angle for 7 pi over 4, which is going to be pi over 4. And what is sine of pi over 4? Sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. And so sine of 7 pi over 4 is going to be negative square root of 2 divided by 2. Okay, in example F, we have cosine of pi, and so what you should recognize is that that is a quadrantal angle, which means I'm not going to need my chart of values in this particular case. I'm going to need to remember these four points, and more specifically, for this particular question, I'm going to need to remember the point located at pi, which is the point negative 1 and 0. And then, remember, sine theta is equal to y, and cosine theta is equal to x, which means that tangent theta is sine divided by cosine, which will be y divided by x. And so cosine of pi is just going to be the x-coordinate of this particular point. And so at pi, the point is negative 1, 0. Cosine is the x-coordinate, and so therefore cosine of pi is equal to negative 1. Now, what if I ask you for what sine of pi was equal to? Sine of pi would be the y-coordinate of that particular point, and so the y-coordinate of that is 0. What if I asked you for the tangent of pi? Well, that would be the sine divided by the cosine, or the y divided by the x, and so that would be 0 divided by 1, which in this case is 0. And so, again, quadrantal angles, we're going to have to use these four points located on an axis and the fact that we have sine theta is y, cosine theta is x, and tangent theta is y over x. Okay, one more quadrantal angle example, tangent of 3 pi over 2. So, again, because this is a quadrantal angle, I don't need my chart of values, but I do need to know that the point at 3 pi over 2 is 0, negative 1, and I need to remember that tangent theta is the y-coordinate divided by the x-coordinate. And so this is going to equal to negative 1 divided by 0, and I cannot di divide by 0, and so therefore tangent of 3 pi over 2 is undefined. Now what if I asked you for sine of 3 pi over 2? Remember that sine theta is just the y-coordinate, and so the y-coordinate of that point is going to be negative 1. And if I asked you for cosine of 3 pi over 2, that is just the x-coordinate of that particular point, because cosine theta is equal to x, and so the x-coordinate is right there. It's equal to zero. So again, the question is only asking tangent of 3 pi over 2. I'm just asking you these two questions in addition to that for more practice on quadrantal angles. Okay, we're back to cosine of 11 pi over 6. So notice that is not a quadrantal angle. Therefore, we are going to need our chart of values here. So I'm going to put that right over here so that we can reference it and we need to figure out what quadrant 11 over 6 pi is. And so 11 pi over 6, well, 6 goes into 11 one time with 5 left over. And so 1 and 5 sixths is going to put me here at the very least. And then remember that 3 pi over 2 is the same as 1 and a half. Well, 5 sixths is bigger than 
than one half. And so that's gonna put me past that negative y axis into quadrant four. And then what do I know about quadrant four? I know that because of all students trust castle, in quadrant four, cosine is positive. And so therefore, that means that this is going to equal to a positive result, and more specifically, it's going to equal to positive cosine of the reference angle for 11 pi over six, which is pi over six. And then looking to my table of values, cosine of pi over six is going to be square root of three over two. And so the result here is going to be positive square root of three divided by two. Okay, I lied. I'm gonna sneak in one more um, quadrantal angle example. And we actually did this one earlier uh, in another example. And so cosine pi over two, again, that's quadrantal because it's at the top of my unit circle. That's the point zero, one. And I know that cosine of theta is equal to the x coordinate. And so the x coordinate of that point at pi over two is equal to zero. And so as you're doing these, try to get faster and faster as you go along. You might start off a little slower, but start seeing if you can knock your time down a little bit, because eventually we wanna to get to be able to do this, let's say within 15 to 20 seconds, maybe actually even less than that, uh, being able to regurgitate these values quickly. Okay, here we have sine of five pi over three. Five pi over three is not a quadrantal angle. It is in a quadrant. And so therefore this table of values is going to be important here. Five over three is really the same thing as one and two thirds of a pi. And so therefore, what quadrant is that going to be in? Well, if you said quadrant four, then you are correct because you can remember that three pi over two is really one and one half pi and two thirds is bigger than one half. So in quadrant four, what do we know about sine? Well, our acronym is going to tell us that in quadrant four, sine is going to be negative because cosine is the only positive function there in quadrant four. And so this is gonna equal to negative sine of the reference angle for five pi over three, which will be one pi over three. And then if I know the value of sine pi over three, I'm gonna be finished. And so sine of pi over three is gonna be square root of three over two. And so therefore this is equal to negative square root of three divided by two. And so that took me about a minute and 20 seconds to explain that to you. But again, I want you to be able to do that. Let's say 10, 15 seconds at the most. That's the goal that we're trying to shoot for because we want to be able to do this quickly. Because when we do this in calculus, this is gonna be like step one of five. And if it takes us a long time to figure out what this value is, that means we're not gonna have as much time to do the actual calculus aspects of a particular question. Okay, last example, we just did five pi over three and we determined that it was in quadrant four. Tangent in quadrant four is negative and so therefore I know that this answer is going to be negative. And so the last thing I'm gonna need to know is what the tangent of pi over three is. Well, taking a look at my values here, tangent of pi over three is the square root of three. And so that actually took me 29 seconds to explain. I think I probably could have done it in a lot less time than that if I didn't have to explain different things or say words that uh, you know I'm having to say here because this is a teaching lesson. Um, but anyways, the moral of the story is that we want to be able to do this quickly. And so the end of this notes, the, uh, the end of these notes, the very last page is just a summary of the steps that I've been using to find these values. And so take a look at that, see if it's helpful for you. And if you have questions or need more practice, then by all means, please do not hesitate to reach out. Because as I said at the beginning of this lecture, this is one of the most important things that you are going to learn from me in pre-calculus, it is going to determine whether you can be successful
on the trigonometry aspects of a calculus class. And so we want to make sure that we have this down pat before we move on. So you guys feel free to reach out if you have any questions. And until next time, hope you guys have a great day.